ladies and gentlemen this is a session for practicing the cure without touching the patient how to go about with personal wellness throughout his life career at any point of time no need to worry about our future as of now we are living for the future our days are not going to be suffering emotionally charged no need to be angry sorrow no need to be sobbing lamenting on what is gone by i need something today that is i want my tomorrow hail and hearty i don't worry about what is gone by i am not worrying about today things are getting on very well with me as i am standing here i am not thinking about today but the very next moment until my last day what will happen to me i need a carefree life not actually careless life but a carefree life full of confidence full of faith and full of bliss that is awaiting me tomorrow when i say i need something i am not able to do it today which means i have to hope for it i am hoping that my need will be fulfilled one day so this is where i am now i am at a loss but i want every gain for me i want the whole life ahead of me with peace composure no suffering whatsoever i will like or i will entertain even in my mind level there should not be any adversities or bad women that shall befall me this is my inherent nature this is my ardent need nobody possesses the way nobody can show me the way towards what i need so when i say i need the need is with me as a feel in the depth of my heart so what is this feel actually where from it came i am seeing so much of worry sorrowful states so much of bad omen we even think that maybe the curse has fallen upon me it is not so i wanted to be a doctor now i am not a doctor of the kinds that the people know but of a different nature a natural feel with me is that i want to be a doctor by the i don't want to touch any medicine i don't even want to touch the patient but the feel must cure if i have come over here i have a feel in my heart that i must go and attend the session and i must go and deliver a speech so the thought has brought me here not actually the body has come here without the thought the thought proceeds and such a big frame is being conducted towards where i want to be the thought has so much power the feel and the thought must be combined together i am not thinking about anything for that matter how i am going to fulfill this feel it is not my job whether you want it or you don't want it i say i want it how great it would be if i could have it how great it would be if i could have it when i have that in my mind that is an indication that i have already lived through it 
as if I am not going to live in the future, it is there already and I am feeling for it. I want to live a life like that, how great it would be, as if I have already gone through the entire life. This is the truth. There is nothing you are going to gain tomorrow. Whatever you have in your mind as beauty of tomorrow, your duty is to abide by it. It is not for you to find the way, but keep it up as aspiration, as a wanton desire, such a beautiful desire I am anticipating, not aspiring actually. As if it has happened, the gift is going to come to me, I am anticipating. Aspiration is not necessary for us, but anticipating so earnestly and ardently that you have in your heart as the greatest of all feelings of tomorrow. Why it is the greatest of all feelings of tomorrow is, it is because nobody has the means to achieve it for me, except the means must come to me. I have nothing to do to pave, the, my, my, to pave away my path and get lost in the din. I am not going to work now because I have no way. I have something in my mind, I must have a fearless tomorrow, a carefree tomorrow, such a beautiful life, stress-free life, no stress in my mind, no strain to my body, there is no physical ailment, there is no physical suffering. This is the life I want. Who has given this thought to me? It is not only with me, it is there with everybody. Everybody wants a life that has no stress in the mind or strain in the body. Strain to the body is the disease. Stress in the mind is that I want to do something but I have no way how to do it. Achieving is the achieving the future. Achieving my heartfelt thanks to the field God has given to me. The almighty power has given to me something that nobody has achieved on this earth and nobody can achieve by the means given to them, that is the knowledge of the people. The knowledge is the hearsays of yesterday. Whatever is going on now, I am observing and I am converting into a speech, into a language, that's all. The knowledge is over there. What I have in my mind for my future, Definitely I have to abide by it, have a strong hold on to it. There is no doubts in it I can entertain throughout my life yet to come. This is how the mind power is starting to work within us. I want, for example, food. When I say food, I am thinking of a restaurant, I am thinking of a provisional store, I am thinking of a job, I am thinking of money, but not food. I need my strength. I am talking about some gym, I am talking about some exercising methods. After that, there is nothing more I can think of. Good food and then extreme exercises or moderate to extreme, whatever we think we deem fit for us, we are doing. But in the end, I am not happy at all. Physically, I am a little bit tired after the exercise. In a very nearby feel is, the moment I do some exercise, before beginning of exercise, I am feeling very much energetic. After the exercise, I feel very tight. I think that I am energized. No. During the stress to the body, what happens is, your body muscles go for constriction. It goes in for a state of spasm. Continued exercise gives a spasm to the muscles and that crushes the blood vessels, stopping the circulation to enter the place where there is the exercise part of it going on. Now, when I am doing a strenuous exercise or a flexing exercise to my muscles, the blood vessels are occluded. No nutrition passes to it. This causes a relative state of death to the muscles and tissues, a partial death to the muscles and tissues. If you know, when people die, after one or two hours, they go in for severe spasmic contractions of the muscles. The muscles will go rigid like bones. We call it rigor mortis. After the death, 
post-mortem reports, the, the forensic people will know. Once you die, after two hours to three hours, the muscles will go in for spasm because no blood supply. Blood supply is cut off. It goes in for severe spasm that causes the rigor mortis syndrome. Like When I am doing the exercise, artificially I am creating a partial rigor mortis-like syndrome. My muscles, whichever muscles are given strain to the, because of the exercise, by means of uh, severe stress to the mind as well as to the body. I am not able to lift, I am not able to do this severe exercise, but I have to do it. This stress causes further strain to the body, weakness to the muscle musculature. Now what happens is, the muscles go in for spasm, obstructing the blood supply, and cuts off the nutrition. This results in a partial death, a temporary death called rigor mortis, partial rigor mortis, that I feel the stiffness in my body after the exercise. We wrongfully attribute this to the strengthening of my muscles and I am staying hale and hearty. No, it is not like that. It is taxing your mind, taxing your body. In the long run, what will happen is you will be losing your energy than gaining energy. Further and further, we have to clarify to our mind that we will not be unnecessarily stressing our mind, which will definitely result in stress to the body. At the age of 57 years, I have not done an exercise, not even lifted a finger without purpose. I hate exercise, but I live now without any medicine, without any gadgets to check my parameters. Nothing is like what your mind says, I am okay. The finest of all gadgets is your mind when it says you are okay. At that point of time, whatever BP you have, whatever cholesterol you have, whatever fat you have, I am 105 kilograms. Wait, I am hearty, I am healthy, I am wealthy, mind-wise, not money-wise. This is the procedure I would like to tell you that keep your mind fit. From your mind, the energy develops, not from your body. If I ask you one question, whether your life energy saves your body or your body is preserving the life energy. Whether the life force is saving the body, or the body is saving the life force. It is the life force that saves the body. Now you say, give organ donation, I will be saving the life. Is it applicable to sense? No. How come a body can save the life force, whether life force is creating, originating in my entire frame? When I was in the womb, before even I was a conceptual product, I was nothing in my womb, in my status. I was something abstract. Nobody knows where I was. But the energy accumulation started, and thereafter, I developed into a ball of cells, tissues, then variants, then I was shaped up into a human being. Before that, we would like to entertain one subject Mind is the root cause of all our activities. It is not the body that is controlling my mind. My mind must have control over my body. My body cannot have control over my mind. My mind has every reason to think and act, but the body is simply a mechanical device like a robo. It has no brains at all. If you have no mind and your body is functioning, I will call you, you are a lunatic. If you have a purpose, then definitely you are a man of some action. When I am doing this, when I am making my grimaces, when I am giving some expressions, and the tone is adjusted up and down, all these things are necessary only if I have a soulful talk. If I am speaking the truth by which I am living, this simply doesn't matter at all. All these gestures require 
to give energy to the speech, to give energy to the language, to give meaning to the language. Without these gestures, without these expressions, with tonal quality changing up and down, all this gives a life energy to the speech. Without this, the, the language is a dumb and a dummy and it makes no sense and it becomes null and void in the end. We give appreciation to our mind. I need food. This food is for my taste and for my satiation of my appetite. The appetite for my stomach and the taste for my tongue is essential for my food. Food is everywhere, but we think of a grain, say a rice or wheat. This is no food at all. You want food. Food means a sumptuous one, whatever you need in varieties, that is food. But we settle down for rice. No, you need food, that is my feel. Who gave this feel to me? It is the almighty creator's wish that I must have food, sumptuous food, tasty food that soothes your, soothes your heart, soothes your mind so that your body is calm. Without taste to the mind, without taste to the tongue, my mind is not at all at ease. If a tasteless food is given, even if I am hungry, I will toss it onto the garbage. I will not take it. So you need food, but we convert it into a farm. Don't figure it out. You don't know what, figure, what a food is. Food is something that gives you energy to the mind as well as to the body. But we are saying that food gives energy to the body, preserves the life force. No, it gives first solace to the mind. That aroma, that flavor, that taste part of it. And how best it is cooked, it all goes before I start tasting eating actually the food. So the aroma must be good, the taste must be good, the color must be good, the feel must be good, then I am tasting. Every food must have all the five special senses together. These five special senses gives energy to the mind first. To see nicely presented, beautiful, the food is served in a nice manner. And to feel it is good the touch feeling, and smell is good, and taste is good. And when I am eating that crunchiness, that sound is good. All these five special senses must culminate, must come together to give energy to the mind. Then this mind level energy gives energy to the body, and functioning of the body is so perfect if I am very much satisfied about what I had in my mind what I had as a food. Anything that you want is, we must remember today, all the five special senses must be satisfied. If only these things are satisfied, this is good for me, this is beautiful for me, otherwise it is harmful to me. This mic is good, give good sense, but there's no taste to it, no smell. So something is inferior, I don't like this. Everything around, the flowers are there, it is good, but I don't like it because no smell, no taste, nothing. A part of it is existing, most part of it to suit my five special senses is gone. But only one thing in the whole world which satisfies the entire five special senses is a woman to a man and a man to a woman, all the five special senses. Beautiful to hear, beautiful to see, beautiful for the touch, and beautiful to taste. So many things are there, and everything put together is one and only of the creations, that is the human creations, man for woman and woman for man. So this is the most possessed one, I will not give it to anybody. Such is the possession that we must have. Minds Power is most important, mind's capacity is most important, mind's solace is most important. Whatever you do must satisfy all these five special senses. Without this satisfaction, there is nothing fruitful is going to come out of it. Now I am concentrating on my mind. I want food, not the rice, not the grain, but wholesomeness. The whole thing I want. 
So a few years ago, the rice was sold for 13 per kilo, 13 rupees per kilo. We harbored a need that we need food. And the food is in plentiful. It cannot be hoarded. It cannot be stored beyond capacity. It cannot be allowed to rot. It cannot be sold. And there is no way rice can be sold, food can be sold, because the food is the birthright of a person. Any food commodity cannot be sold, such government we don't need. How come now, from 13 rupees it came down to 2 rupees, then 1 rupee, now 35 kilos will be given to you free of cost. It is not free of cost, only now my birthright is coming to me. Never say it is sum. no free of cost at all. You hoarded it, you sold it, and then now you are saying you are giving it away for free. Never. I need food for my life, I need food for my activity. People will say, you work fast, toil hard, and then eat. What now we say is, don't work hard, don't toil hard, we are not buffaloes, we are not cows, and we eat first and then work. We are here to eat and sleep with a lot of sense attached to ourselves and with a lot of solace, earning for us so that we are grateful to the heart that houses our mind in which God's great gift is there, live peacefully forever. Who has this command? God has this command for the man to live forever peacefully, and this peace is God-given blessing to all of us. Nobody has the right to eliminate this peace from one's heart. If they say that work first and then eat, I am saying, unless I eat, I cannot work. Don't go by the popular slogans, go by the individual feel. We are all individuals. This is the difference between the animals and man. We are individuals, and we are the ones who can think about the future. So I am having some worry in me, some fear in me, and I am very much depressed about something I had lost in the past, and I am aspira my aspirations are different from each. Every single person has his own aspirations, his own limitations he feels, as a result, he worries. As a result, he is fearfully awaiting his future. All these things are mental subject, and that mind is given only to man and not to animals. Animals don't have all these emotions. Fearing tomorrow, worried about the present situations, and I am very much depressed about what has gone in the past. All those things, these emotions, animals don't possess. Only man houses mind, and the mind is safeguarding our life. Mind is safeguarding our life force. When, I have, when I'm having some confidence about tomorrow, regarding which I fear most, now I have some faith in me, I have some confidence, I have my life with me. And I, have, I am having the life well preserved in my heart. This is the reason why I am surviving. If I lose my heart, I will die. Only bad woman shall befall you. There is no escape for you. This is what I have in my heart, and my future is bleak. I will hang today. I will end my life today. The life is preserved, protected by the mind force, which if it believes in the life, the life force will be rejuvenating, enlivening you. If you don't believe in your heart, the message, the blessing of God, that I shall be okay all time to come, and there is no distress, there is no bad omen that shall befall me, I am well protected, 
then I want to live. If the opposite of is there in my heart, I don't want to live. Come to the mind level now. Whatever is there in the mind will be done. Poor people in this country wanted food, but they have no money. They did not raise a slogan against government. They did not go and beg the government. They did not made an uprise. There was no revolution for food, but the prices are slashed down. Why and how? The field has entered there. We have not gone out shouting slogans and crying hi, but it went there because most people were wanting that food cannot be sold. Food should be given free, of course. It should not be sold. So food is the only blessing God has sent down upon the earth for all the living beings. Only man is starving. Nothing is starving. Because man is hoarding and then selling. Food is not meant for sale. This truth is now coming out. Because before you are created, the food is created. Before man is created, all his needs are well met with on this earth. Then he was received as a guest, guest of honor. How can then people ask me, work and then eat? It is against any common sense. Only I eat, then I have energy to work. I must have sumptuous food, then I will have good mind to work for you. Otherwise. I don't want to work. I cannot work. Even if I work, I am not being sincere in my work. That sincerity is most important only if I feel what I have in my heart is the most important thing for my life to come. Believe in what you want and things will develop from there. You have your mind, you have your body, you have your soul and you have the confidence. For what? for something good that I am possessing in my heart. What you possess in your heart is God-given blessing you should not suffer at all. What you possess as even more beautiful thing is stay as an individual, stay with me, that is the God-given blessing and I am here to give you what you wanted. He will give you knowledge, he will give you of his wisdom so that there is no death at any point of time. I will not fall short of any of my needs. This is how we are going to propel us from this moment onwards. I am not going to use my energy. I am going to use my mind to conduct me. My mind moves and my body follows. Everybody is waiting for the relief, awaiting the future will hold something good for them, hopefully waiting and awaiting. But I am trying hard in my own way. I have my body here, and this is being conducted by the life force. And the life force is being conducted with mind. Unless there is mind, I have nothing to move. Unless I move, my mind moves, there is no energy to move. Without my mental command, my energy will not move. and. When the energy doesn't move, the heart will not tick and the pumping station will not work, circulation will not happen, my body dithers. My body structures are now slowly getting destroyed. This will never happen if only you have your mind intact. Suppose I have something in me that I will not fall sick. I will never fall sick and none of my people should fall sick. This is what is going to help you. This is what is going to energize you. This is what is going to enliven you, rejuvenate you. Barring this, there is no rejuvenation, no enlivening. Whatever amount of food you intake, it is not going to produce any energy. I am suffering very much in my heart, like I am sorrowful, in a very state, sad state. If at all the food comes to me, my depression overtakes and I don't want food, even the appetite is lost. I am so much in for a sumptuous food. Such is the hunger I have. Good food is coming. One sadness is sufficient. The appetite is put off. 
the worst news comes in shock I die. What is the reason for the heart block now? They are saying 90% heart block, 70% heart block, 60% heart block, three arteries are blocked. Cholesterol is the reason for that. Without cholesterol, is there no block? Yes, there is block. Giving cholesterol, anti-cholesterol medicines, do they get all right? No, they don't get all right. Has ever a BP of an individual brought down when it is hypertensive? No, it is not. In every case, once you die in the hospital under the care of a doctor, he will give you the death certificate that he died due to such and such diseases. When a doctor certifies that he would die with such and such diseases, that means he has not cured the disease he is treating. <laughs> such sort of things I am not telling newly to you, you know already, that's the reason why the acknowledgement comes. We are all programmed in the mind for every eventuality that shall happen in our lifetime. Every need God blesses you with, there is a way that comes from the depth of your mind, you call it the soul. When you acknowledge it, that means we are not giving a thought to it, that's all. I am bringing you to a reminder. I am bringing you back to your memory that we have forgotten long time ago. I am not saying anything new except that what you know already. Mind level impact on me is most important whether I am leading a good life or a very bad life. Suppose this is the moment I want to entertain my life in the peaceful manner, entertain my life in the peaceful manner, not joyous manner. We don't want joy, we don't want happiness, we want peace. We want solace to our heart at any cost. Because joyous, happy mood will not hold good for all time to come. Sometimes we can be happy, sometimes we can be joyous, all the time we can never be joyous. This is not what, what God has given you. What we need is peace, solace and composure to the mind that is fit for any point of time from birth to death. Go for peace, opt for peace and have faith that peace comes only from the Almighty Creator, the Originator who sent us here with everything designed for you, fashioned for you, so that you are received as a guest in this world. People hoarded everything God has given to me and then made me work, toil, be a slave to them. Then I will give you money, the token that government gives you. Go to the provision store and take it. This is not for what I have come here. What is not here for me that I must work, then earn money and then go to the provision store and then buy? I give two rupees, immediately you go and harvest and uh, you bring me the rice. No, it is there. Then why don't you give? It is for the, it is not the birthright for me. It is the fundamental need of me to stay as a human being. I give my vote to any government that will not sell the food commodities. That's important. People will be saying, they will go, they will grow lazy. You can see the children. Are they working? Are they lazily sitting down at home? They are simply eating, enjoying, and they jump to the skies and the earth. That is the bubbling energy because there is no stress in the heart. The moment stress is removed from the heart, we are only thinking about the working methodology. Only if you work, the nation will survive. I am asking you whether the body must work or the mind must work. The body will invent anything new or the mind will invent anything new. The peace and comfort is necessary to the body 
or the peace and comfort is the very embodiment of the mind. Mind should be comforted, mind should be rested, mind should be given peace so that it introduces new inventions to the world. Innovations we don't want, inventions are necessary. So I don't need this, it is uh, blocking my view and it doesn't have the satisfactory aspects to a few special senses of mine, no smell, no taste, nothing except the hard hardware. So this is something wrong. Anything you want must be supple, subtle, it must have the quality to satisfy all your special five senses and then it is a product for you, well designed by God. Otherwise you are doing something, it is not God given product to you. You can have your energy through electricity. But this electricity, I don't require this. I want light to my eyes, or you want the light from outside source. All the jungle animals, wild animals, they have beautiful night vision. They come out only in the nights. Take an elephant, or a cheetah, or a leopard, or whatever. They have such beautiful eyesight. That light I want, believe. I don't want my headlight. I want my eyes to be lighted up. The light must come from here and I must see. Do you wish for this or you don't wish for this? Now I am saying, how is it possible? Whether you want it or you don't want it is the question. Whether it is possible with you or not possible with you is not asked for. What do you want? God first gives you his blessing that this is your need. Now I harbor it. Now I want it. Then, using my knowledge, I say, it is not possible. Using my hearsay abilities, I have not heard these things anywhere. It is a blabber. It is simply a vain talk. No, but you say that you have deep inside your heart some wish that how great it would be if it comes true. You have already lived through it. Such is the greatness. Then why do you deny it? We are not people to deny anything but accept everything beyond our capacity to understand, even to comprehend. It is much more than that. God's blessing has come to you. You have lived through it already and you have given that exclamation how great it would be. So you have lived through it already. Finally, whatever you live through comes to the mind, I am satisfied. Body is satisfied or your mind is satisfied? My mind is satisfied. Your mind is already satisfied. Believe in it. This belief beyond your ability and capacity is prayer. Prayer is, I am harboring certain things that which I cannot do to myself. I am seeking the blessings and the help of the almighty power. The almighty power, God, we love it. We believe in it and we follow the God's commandments in letter and spirit. Have we seen God? We have not seen God. Then you say, I know God, I believe in God. Without seeing, how can you say that I am believing in God? This is wisdom, beyond your knowledge. The truth once told to you, there is no dispute about it, there is no argument over it, you have to accept it and this is the wisdom from God will carry me up till end. No, it is not possible. There is a doubt in it and without regard to the future, there is a big question mark. Who gives you all these things? It is a preliminary warning that comes to your mind that you worry about your future towards that end your life is proceeding. Listen to the heart, what it has in its depth. If I have doubt about my future, that worry is there. So I am treading the path of worry and I am going to meet that end, which is a very worryable state. 
if I have peace in my mind, then I am proceeding towards peace and my ultimate goal is, where I will be reaching is, a peaceful situation forever to come. And that peace will be given to you now. When I am having faith, I feel something, but I want it, yet I have no means. But I want it now or later. When it happens to me, let it happen. It is not the need of mine at this moment of time. I don't want to live like another person. I want to live in the way I am commanded to live. That wish is there in my heart. That is the godly commandment. That is the blessing. That is the wish of God I have in my mind. I will follow that. I will not be revealing it to anybody. When I reveal that, people will mock at me, make fun of me. I am something like an extraorbital. I am like an extraterrestrial. I am not speaking the language of the people. The language of the people is mundane, down to earth. What you possess in the mind is beyond the limits of the skies. The mind is so powerful, so vast. If you think that heavens and the earth is big, the mind can conquer the heaven and go much beyond and see what is beyond that. That is the power your mind has. Give the capacity, allow the mind to function in its full capacity. Don't bring the brain, the knowledge, to enter into your mind and start disputing and destroying God-given blessings. It is not possible. We are unjustifiably wronging our own souls. You know God is there without seeing him. And you are so well trenched in that, that God is definitely there. It is he who gave you that wisdom of him. And anything that comes to me, which is beyond my ability to construe or to conduct myself in the way, then I fully endorse that it is the blessing of God, so beautiful it is, I want to live through it. The more you say that you want to live through it without confronting it and contradicting it, it is prayer. <laughs>